Shout out everybody out there on Team Banky Pam, man. Boom, 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 boom. Appreciate the love. Appreciate the support. 33, man. 33 years of prison stories. We rolling. We out here. We out here. We rolling, man. You know, happy holidays to everybody out there, man. We trying to get it in. Um, Today, man, Um, I've been uh, given a task, man, to look at this uh, T.I. video, man, and, and do a reaction video. I never did. I, well, I haven't did a reaction video in a minute, so I'm going to check this out. And um, see what it got going on. It says, T.I. admitting snitching on his dead cousin. And before I do this, I don't even know how this is going to turn out. <laughs> but um, I rock with T.I. music, man. I, I can't say, you know, the dude. I don't know these dudes personally. I don't know none of these cats like that personally. So when you don't know these people personally, you only can go by, you know, what you know of them. And what I know of him is the music, you know. Um, I don't get caught up on what a whole lot of other people say about a whole lot of other people, stars, whoever, you know, the case may be. I, you know, I don't know him, you know, and I know people say a lot of things, but these supposed to be words coming out of his own mouth, so I'm going to check it out, see what he's talking about. But as far as his music, yeah, he, he, uh, yeah, he, he be rhyming, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So let's see what's going on here. Let me check it out. Yeah, okay. Why are we going through the court press? So, we count no gun cases to that. And, you know, my lawyer said, well, you know, I can make everything go away if it, do, if it was your meals. After he had passed, I had a talk with him. Then I take all the charges you got. If you can walk away free and put it on me. All right, now, first of all, I'm... I'm, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm listening to the words, if I ain't mistaken. He said, after he had passed, I had a talk with him. I don't think you can talk to somebody after they pass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I may be wrong, but that sounds like what he said. But we don't see. Goddamn right. So is that so, what boys giving you shit about because you put it on? No, nah, hell no. Nah, okay. Nah, nah. Don't nobody even know about that. I just volunteered. This is <laughs> don't nobody even know about that. I'm just being honest. Yeah. That's the only time. Mm. I done never said or gave no information about nobody because that's my cousin, my big cousin. Mm. He was dead and he told me that it was okay. <laughs> Police, pull us over. Police, pull us over. Pull us over. I have a gun. Why are we going through the uh, so, <laughs> I don't know. If that's all it is to it, then that was a short one. I didn't know how long it was going to be, but... uh. He's saying that uh, his cousin was dead and he said it was okay. You know, that's a little, I mean, you know, maybe he mixed his words up or he didn't say exactly what he was intending to say. But, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a different world when you talk about that snitching, man, because, like I say, it's different rules, you know, apply to different people. Now, you know, in penitentiary, you know, it ain't no excuses allowed. You know, it's they just it's just a no tolerance. It's a zero tolerance about snitching. You know, that's just the way they carry it in prison. But, you know, and then out here in the streets, you know, they got the same rules if you in that life, if you in that gangster life, if you in that um, you know, that drug life or you doing all of these things, did that go along with it, then you already know what you're getting into when you get into it. So whenever you do get into it, Either you're going to play by the rules or you're not, you know, and if you don't play by the rules, then, you know, that's the label that just put upon you and then whatever comes after that, you know, who knows. But, you know, knowing these rules going into what you're doing, then you know what you're getting yourself into, you know, and um, um, T.I., obviously, you know, he know what he was doing when he was doing it. So, you know, the thing about it is when you a winner, you know, everybody loves a winner, man, but, you know, when you lose, you lose by yourself. You know what I'm saying? You lose by yourself, but when you lose, it seems like everybody want to get out of what they got into. It's good when it's going on, but when, it, when, 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 when the London Bridges start to fall, then you start to rethink everything, man. You start to rethink everything because when you think about it, man, like I say, to... to, to just submit to years and decades in prison 
Um, and and there's only one thing that's stopping you from doing that is just to open your mouth. You know what I'm saying? A lot of dudes is not going to be able to, um, they're not going to be able to handle that type of pressure. They just not, you know what I'm saying? Because they saying all I got to do is say this. But you got to realize, like I said, it was rules when you got in the game. So now you violating the rules. So it's going to be consequences to pay either way. It may not be years or decades in prison. See, some dudes may put it on the scale. They say, well, okay, yeah, they're going to label me a snitch or da 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 Well, you know, you, you got crazy people out in this world for that. Sometimes, you know, the punishment for that is death. Somebody might want to kill you because you sacrifice somebody else. But what they don't understand there in T.I. case, it, it may be different because what he's saying is he told on a dead person. Just as the other dude did um, what is um, baby's brother, you know, uh, Gangsta Williams, turns Gangsta Williams. So he told on dead people. That may be a little different because of the simple fact that they're saying they told on somebody that's dead. But what people don't realize is this. You're, when they tell something, they tell them to keep from going to prison. But usually the case is they're telling on somebody else to put them in prison. You see what I'm saying? So what you're trying to avoid, what you are afraid of, what you um, dread, you're imposing on somebody else. You understand me? And whatever reasons you, you know, justify in your mind that you're doing it for is because... Well, I don't want to be away from my family, or if that's all I got to do to stay out here, or I, I can't miss these years and my kids, I got... The person you're telling on got the same things. He have a family, he have kids, he have life that he going to be missing out on. If you do something together, or you do something where both of y'all got knowledge of what y'all are doing, then it's an unwritten um, um, rule and oath, man, that you know you keep your mouth closed. You know what I'm saying? You keep your mouth closed. You know, it was all good when y'all was winning, so it got to be all good when y'all losing. You know, I told y'all many, many times, man, even a fish wouldn't get in trouble if he kept his mouth closed. But a lot of people can't do that. You know, that pressure that comes upon you when you caught is uh, is sometimes it's too overwhelming for somebody else. And you heard a lot of dudes scream and yell and holler and say, man, I, I ain't telling on nobody. I can do that time. I can, I can do it. Man, before I left prison, you had dudes that was clear. Clear in the pod. I had been in pods with dudes that clear say, man, man, don't do that, man, don't do that around me. I'm going to tell you right now. People ask me, I'm going to tell you. I ain't standing here no more. They in prison now, you know, saying that they would tell to, to, to get out. They in prison now saying that if you do something, and the people come at them and they at risk for standing there any longer, they'll tell to get out. So... It's only obvious that they'll tell not to even go in there because you got dudes in there in prison there that if they could have told on somebody to, you know, keep from going in there, they would have. And they make that crystal clear. You know what I'm saying? But like I say, it's, 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 it's all going to come from the principles and the morals that's on the inside of you, man. How you view yourself, how you want to be viewed, how you want to be perceived, you know, um. Uh, it's, 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 uh, it's crazy, man. But like I say... It comes down to personal conviction and personal morals, man. Me, myself, I couldn't, I could never tell on nobody because of the simple fact is I done been through it. You know what I'm saying? I done been through it and I wouldn't wish it on nobody. I wouldn't wish that type of stuff on um, people that I don't even consider to be my friend, people that I don't even consider to be good people. I wouldn't wish no um, prison term on them, man, because I know, I know what that is. I know what a drain it is. And I also know, even though I may not like them, I know what it's going to do to their family as well because it's just not a drain on you. It's a drain on your family. It's a drain on your loved ones. It's a drain on your kids. And whatever dislike I got for this guy, his family ain't got nothing to do with it. You know what I'm saying? So, you you know, prison is, is, is bigger than what it looks like. It ain't just that dude to go to prison. It's the family too. It's the kids. It's the grandkids. It's everybody who loves that person is held accountable for you know, his mistakes. Everybody who loves that person is held accountable for, you know, um, the label that's on his name, you know. So um, I wouldn't want to do that to nobody myself. That's just me. You know, whatever reasons T.I., you know, used to justify that, that's him. That's something that he got to live with. It ain't really for me to judge. If you asking me would I do it, no, I wouldn't do it. Because even dead people have legacy. Even dead people got kids. Even dead people got grandkids. Even dead people got a mama. You know, so what you're putting on them 
it still affects their reputation. It still affects. If they didn't go to the grave giving up that information their self, if they didn't go to the grave, um, you know, with, with that being known and they didn't had a funeral and, you know, uh, 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 all the things that go along with, you know, the, the, the losing the life and they have a, a, a reputation that's left upon them, why would you put something else on top of that? You know what I'm saying? Why would you put something else on top of that? This is the same reason why I say certain videos that a lot of people be asking for that I don't, I don't, you know, really partake in, or if I do say something about it, it's got to be generally um, known. But I'm not going to say things about certain people that I may know about, even if I like them or dislike them, even if it's true or false, just because of the simple fact is they have family as well. It ain't got nothing to do with what they did or how they conducted themselves or survived while they was in prison. You understand? So... It's um you have to have a moral compass, man, with everything that you do, you know, and um sometimes, you know, that line is blurred in different people and sometimes certain people look at it in different ways, you know. T I seemed to be, you know, okay with whatever he did, you know what I'm saying? I know, you know, they say at first, uh, he just kept denying that he ever said anything at all to, to receive the sentence that he got. I think it kind of makes him look a little, you know, um, shaky did after all that time and kept saying that and then he come back and say well he did say something but it was only on his dead cousin you know but people gonna pick at you know every little thing they can to try to dissect your story to try to dissect your answers or whatnot. you know um, like I said only he knows only uh, God can judge him if he's satisfied with his life then who am I to say what he did was right or wrong I can only speak for me and what I would do and what I uh have done, but um, I ain't gonna, um, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna put nothing else on nobody else to to save myself because whatever I did, um, you know, I should have thought about it when I was doing it. You know what I'm saying? I should have been smart, been safe, and made good decisions. So, you know, that's the way I view it. That's the way I look at it. You know what I'm saying? But um. You know, shout out to T.I. and his music, man. You know what I'm saying? And um, his truth. He know what his truth is and, and how he uh, how he deal with it, man. But it's a lot of that these days, man. That's that's the culture now, you know what I'm saying? People will not want to go to prison so bad that they be willing to put somebody else in the position that, you know what I'm saying, that they fear being in, that they dread going in. But you're never thinking about the other person. You're only thinking about self. So if, is it a selfish act? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because if you never doing anything wrong, never doing anything outside the law, never doing anything illegal, you will never be put in a position to have to tell on what somebody else is doing, which is none of your business. You see what I'm saying? So it's the way you got to look at it. You know, Don't be put yourself in a position to be pressured to tell on somebody else. You know, by, by living your life the way that you know you should be living it. And then don't do nothing that you can't stand for. If you can't stand for it, don't do it. You know, but it goes back to everything that I preach on this YouTube, man. Prison is not where you want to be. Like I said, man, it's thousands and thousands of dudes that I know right now. And not one, not one single solitary one of them um, want, to, want to be in prison. They want to get out. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, while we out here in this free world, we should be doing everything we, we can possibly do not to go in, you know, because it's definitely going to be the place that you don't want to be, you know. And um, I, I had a dude that I um, grew up with, man, more so was more closer with his brother than I was with him, but I knew him, you know, and grew up with him. And um, he had uh, been out here working, making good money, doing, you know, getting good money, doing doing a lot of good things, man, living his life and everything. But he had one problem, man, and that one problem was threatened to put him in prison for, you know, some years. You know, not no decades or nothing, but some years. And just the threat of that alone, um, you know, was too much for him to bear because he had been free all his life you know, his entire life, and now he, you know, 50, and, and, you know, getting ready to go to prison, you know, for some years, and he couldn't take it, you know, living a good life, making good money, you know, uh, got the things that he need and everything, and um, he couldn't take it, man, but it was inevitable that he was gone because of his actions, 
And um, man, just out of the blue, man, he just he just um went out one night and and, and um went off to a secluded place, man, and um and, and, and took his own life, you know, took his own life, you know, sacrificing his future and everything else just because he couldn't fathom himself going to prison and being away for years. You know what I'm saying? Dealing with all you have to deal with in prison and everything like that. So it was crazy. It came out of the blue to everybody. It shocked everybody, you know. But, you know, this is the fear of dudes, you know, losing their liberty and losing their freedom, you know. But the, the irony in that is, you know, it, it, it's like, you know, a lot of people out here is moving around and acting like prison is not an option. You know, they're doing things that definitely has prison as an option, but they act like it's not an option. You know, they act like it's not an option, man. And that kind of puzzles me out here, you know, that, that people act like that. And, um, but yet they claim to have such a fear of, of losing their freedom. You know, you should treat freedom, man. You should have a fear of, of, of prison as, as healthy as you have a fear of death. You know what I'm saying? Because it's the closest thing to death. It's, it's, it's the cousin of death. You know, because if you're, if you're there, you, you are removed from everything just as if you are dead. And if you stay there long enough, people will believe that you are or treat you as such because life is going to continue to go on, man. It's just going to keep moving with or without you. You know, um, that's just fact. You know, that's just for the, a pure fact. Um, and, you know, like I say, man, it, it I, I just was on this... Um, I was on this this um, path of thinking, you know, just recently, you know, just analyzing stuff in my mind. And I was saying to myself, you know, talking to my grandson, I was like, man, it's like, you know, if you if you in 2022, man, and you and you start off knowing, you know, we learn from what has already occurred. We learn from what has already transpired. We learn from what we see, what we experience, you know, what we what we know to be true. And um. It's like if you start out in a life now, man, in 2022, you know, it's just like to me, I would say if you start out right now in 2022 and you, you know, start trying to smoke crack or something, you know, knowing the history of crack, knowing what it does to people, knowing the effects of it, you know, and you still, you know, indulge it or, or want to try to, then you, 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 you qualify for a psychological evaluation. You know what I'm saying? You you qualify for a psychological evaluation because you have seen the results of this. You know what happens, what becomes of this. And to think that you will be any different from millions before you, it's, it's, it's just asinine thinking. It's asinine thinking. It's something that's disconnected in our thinking when we, you know, take upon a path about something that we that is documented history about. You know what I'm saying? It's documented history of where this leads to. You know, whenever you, you know, set out to do anything in life, man, you have to have an end game. You got to see where you're going. You know, you don't get in no car and start it up and don't know where you, your destination is, where you're trying to get to. You know when you start the car, where you're trying to go. So if you start out in something like, you know, like say smoking crack or something, where you trying to go? Because you know where it's going to lead to. And I say that the same thing with starting out now. And a life of crime, a life of gangs, a life of drugs, a life in stick up kids and 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 flim flammery and larceny and skullduggery and and, and and tomfoolery. You know where this stuff leads to because we've already seen it. We've already seen it. So what what is disconnecting in our thinking? You know, when you see kids and they, 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 they start out playing football and they all know, you know, they play all through Pee Wee and, you know, uh, uh, high school and college. And they trying to make it to the NBA. They see what they trying to do. This is why they started out so young. Basketball, the same thing. Tennis, the same thing. Acting, you go and act. You see where you trying to go. You see the end game, right? So when you take that philosophy and you apply it to, Oh, I'm going to get in a life of crime. I'm going to get in, uh, I'm going to be a, the biggest drug dealer. I'm going to be, you know, a kingpin. I'm going to be a, a gang, a, a warlord. We see the results of that. Even in the biggest movie of all times, the greatest gangster movie, Scarface, he died. So we see there's no success. Then. So where's the disconnect in our thinking that we 
start out in these type of things that we see has no end game. So we already, you know, setting ourselves up for, for failure. For failure off the top, man. And I don't, I think that's some type of reprogramming that we need to do within ourselves and within our community, especially within our kids and our grandkids, man. I think it's our duty, man, to do that because, man, we we we, we already, um, you know, sabotaging our success when, when the things that we start out doing or the things that we indulge in. We already know there's no future in it. There's no success in it period and whatever success that you might qualify as success some money some cars some houses some trips some women whatever it is it's temporary it's temporary like i said you cannot take the the, the elevator to success man there's no other proven remedy besides the stairs you just got to take the stairs man and then when you do choose to take the elevator and on your way up and you're doing all this dirt and you're doing all this dirt and you got other people that's doing dirt with you when you, you know, when it when the elevator stops and it started to crash and come down real fast, yeah, ain't no need to start pointing the finger. Oh, he did it, he did it be try to try to lessen, you know, the 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 penalty for what you already knew you was doing was wrong. You don't have to take your weight, man, just like you was taking your your money. It's like you was taking your trips, just like you was buying your... You won't have to take the weight, you know what I'm saying, on your own as well, man. But, you know, my suggestion would be never to indulge. <laughs> never to indulge in that which we know has no success. Never to indulge in that which we know has no success. Period. And expect success. You know, the greatest... Disappointment in life is unmet expectations, you know, and, and to indulge in some and expect some that we know not to be um, reality, not not to be the norm. That's that's asinine, man. Qualify for a psychological evaluation, you know. Um, but anyway, man, this is just uh, me <clears throat> rambling because of what I seen. You know, wanted to do the reaction. So, uh, y'all just let me know what y'all think in the comments, man. Give me your opinions on what you think about it or how you perceive it or whatever I said that you agree with, disagree with, or, you know, take issues with it. Because I'm just speaking from my opinion, you know, my views, my experience, and, um, you know, I'm just a person, you know what I'm saying? And um, my life definitely ain't perfect, and it definitely haven't been um, good choices made, you know, when they should have been, you know, but... uh. I'm a work in progress, man. I learn every day. I'm trying to do better every day. I know better, so I'm trying to do better. And I'm trying to, um, you know, stop some, some kids and, and people from going down the route that I went, man. Because it was a long, hard road. And um, it ain't nothing nicer you know, down that path, man. So uh, in the meantime, in between time, man, I see y'all in 24 hours. I appreciate y'all indulging me and listening to me. And um, y'all uh, share this with somebody who might need to see it. You know, it might be you. You know, if it ain't, it might be the person beside you. But share with somebody who needs to see it, man. Y'all be safe out there. Be smart. Make good decisions, man. And duck all of them hooks, man. Boom, 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 boom. Especially that stuff that we know. And that which has no success. Do not indulge. Boom. Thank you, special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure delicious. Coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.